Hey everybody, Mike Miller, Herald Times, columnist Jeremy Price, coming to you from Assembly Hall. Uh, really the uh, temporary home of a legend today, sitting in uh, Bill Raftery's spot. Um, he and Carter Blackburn covered today's game, broadcast today's game for uh, for CBS. Which, and by the way... I left their hotel Left a keys. whole lot of stuff here. Left the, uh, the promo cards... Tonight on CBS, what does Vladimir Putin's war in Syria look like? 60 Minutes goes to the front line. Spectacles whole here. A lot of leftovers. Yeah, a whole lot of leftovers. we got to get those back to Bill. Bill yeah. needs his glasses. And, and three cups of glasses, bottles of water. Four. Five. Man, there's a lot. That's, that's how legends are born. Water glasses. Born. Anyway. Um, we're here also at the site of a uh, pretty thorough drubbing of a... Um, Ohio State team, I'm not really sure what to, to make a whole lot out of. Uh, 85-60 was the final score. Um, extends a nine-game winning streak for Indiana. Uh, the 4-0 start is the best for IU in Big Ten play since the 2007-2008 team. Um, and really this was um, an example of, I think, not only the ceiling for this team, uh, really, uh, you kind of touched on this in your column, Jeremy. This is kind of the standard that Indiana can really draw from moving forward. Yeah, it is, especially that first half, you know, the, the the way they did it. You know, a lot of times, especially in recent years, when Indiana's had a big half or a big game, especially here at Assembly Hall, it's it's often a case of sort of, you know, a snowball effect and, and the threes are going down and it's just sort of an offensive snowball effect. And this game was very different in the fact that it wasn't like that. You know, Indiana really dominated that first half from a standpoint of dominated the rebounding game. Uh, Turnovers were down for Indiana. They were up for Ohio State. Uh, they really out Ohio State, which is a rarity uh, in most any year. I mean, Ohio State's year in, year out, one of the more physical teams in the Big Ten. And got to the rim on offense. You know, wasn't just relying on the jump shot. They, they got the ball inside. They got uh, some in transition, but it wasn't all in transition either. Just a lot of really open layups and, and free throws and things like that in the half court. So, uh what this really set the template for was the way that Indiana can play in terms of effort and passion, um, focus, discipline, kind of all those aspects of the things that really stood out. And, and like you said, I, I don't still not really sure what to make of this Ohio state team, but I don't know that that's really important today. Uh, the more important thing is what can we make out of this Indiana team? And for the first time in big 10 play, they actually made a statement that suggested that they're capable at least of contending with some of the better teams in the conference. And they had fun doing so. And I don't think that's anything to scoff at. I mean, they, they were really just in tune with one another. They picked their spots well, especially Troy Williams. Uh, and he was a big reason why they were able to get out to that 48-18 halftime lead. I, I, did we just touch on that? The um, largest halftime lead for this program since 2000, I think it was when they had 27 points. 27-point uh, lead against uh, Northwestern back first, there. In that first season, time so. they've had a 30-point lead in a Big Ten game in at least 20 years. Not sure they've been able to dig up records further back right. than that, but... In close to 20 years. And it was all so. Indiana from the very, very first moments. Um, Troy Williams got the scoring started. Uh, he was kind of a factor from those earliest moments. Kind of helped Indiana get out to that And 10. let me throw in there that, you know, Troy scored early, but the, the first defensive possession of the game, took he took a charge. a charge, which sort of set the tone for the rest of the things that were coming. So it was sort of, it wasn't just the... Troy Williams, like with the rest of the team, it wasn't just the things that we know he can do, but he, he added the other things that he needs to do to to be a more complete player. Yeah, I mean, recently, obviously, he's been kind of mired in a little bit of a slump. Well, a little bit of a slump. Pretty big, <laughs> considerable slump, uh, given all the things he's expected to do for this team. Tom Crean wrestled with the question all week about how to um, kind of harness Troy without taking away uh, the freedom that he has, the freedom that kind of makes him the player that he is and can be. Uh, today, again, I, I think Yogi kind of touched on it. He saw Troy just... Um, a focus that was kind of channeled through playing with his head up, maybe playing with a little more balance in his game, balance in his approach to things. Um, you know, th there were still moments when Troy um, showed some of the, the other faces of his game. It was far from a perfect effort, but coming off the last week and a half that he had been on, uh, a major step forward, and hopefully you'd think that, you know, given James Blackman's absence, Troy Williams and Yogi Ferrell are really going to have to be the guys where it kind of starts from, and to kind of get this, and to get this from Troy Williams today against Ohio State, I think is a very, very big step forward, especially looking ahead at this month and the wins that Indiana should be able to kind of pick up and clean up with. Yeah, and I don't think it was really a surprise, though, because if you look at Troy's track record, the track record is if he has two, three, four kind of bad games in a row, he tends to to snap out of it after yep. that. 
uh, and especially you, you add that to for whatever reason uh, seems like you put the lights on on a, on a you know a prime time or a uh, weekend featured CBS game kind of thing yeah. seems like uh, that that seems to work for him so you combine those two things together I, I wasn't at all surprised to see Troy Williams have a big game out here today but the nice thing for Indiana was as good a game as he had it wasn't a one man show no, by no. any stretch of the imagination and you mentioned Yogi Ferrell stepping up I mean he had a solid game uh, finished with three turnovers but I think two or three of those came in the second half uh, when you know obviously it was a little difficult for Indiana to maintain that focus a little bit um, but he just sort of let the game come to him. I didn't. I didn't think he forced things uh, today at all. Um, so, really, a good, good bounce back effort for a lot of guys, including Robert Johnson, who also kind of got out of a little bit of a funk today. Yeah, really great line for Johnson. What eleven points, uh, six assists, six uh, six rebounds, uh, and and while he struggled offensively, he still you know he's had he's had a tough uh, tough run at it to start Big Ten too. But I think and this kind of goes back to the non conference too early on. Uh, in November when Indiana was still kind of feeling and finding its way through the early schedule. Uh, even when his shot's not there, even when he's kind of playing hurt as he seems to be right now, uh, he's always been able to bring a bit of a defensive presence. And I think today, uh, team-wide, there was more activity. Um, I, I always come back to the word mindful. I think they were mindful of assignments, mindful of the things they had to do. Granted, Ohio State's not a very talented offensive team. Uh, you know, their leading score today was uh, Jaquan Lyle, 29 points. Uh, but Lyle's had a very up and down run at it in his first season. This is not a team that really has that go-to guy right now. They're not a right. very skilled offensive team. But I, I'm I'm taking this as more sign of progress, more sign of improvement for Indiana. They're not letting teams like Ohio State and Wisconsin, Nebraska really run all over them. They're they're getting right. stops where they can get them, and I, I think that. Really, right now is the kind of improvement that this team, the, the short incremental improvement that this team needs to make, and they're doing it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's there's no reason to get too up or down one way or the other in, in terms of you know this this team hasn't really gone against an elite offensive team probably since Duke really. Yeah. Um, and it'll get that chance eventually. But the big thing is that they're showing signs of doing the right things. And today it was they had that effort there. There was like you said, they were they were mindful of the things they needed to do. They were digging down. They were collapsing in the paint. Uh, you know, Ohio State missed missed some shots that you would like to think that teams would make more often than not. But nonetheless, Indiana made those shots difficult for them and then was all over the the, the ball in terms of rebounding, dominated the rebounding. Uh, what was it, 50, 50, 31, 50 31, which uh, against Ohio State is regardless of who they're putting out there. That's that's pretty impressive because Ohio State doesn't get lit up on the boards like that very often. No, not at all. Uh, from here, Indiana heads. Well, they have a bye week coming up. Uh, one of I think this might be the only bye. I, th I think so. I think this might be the only one. Nonetheless, uh, not back in action until Saturday at the barn in Minneapolis. Uh, so a bit of a layoff for Indiana to kind of carry over uh, their recent 4-0 start. Um, but so far, this is the return of Indiana's, you know, elite offense. I mean, granted, actually, I mean, they, by Indiana standards, they didn't shoot particularly great. I mean, 46% is fine. It's great. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, for Indiana, I'm almost expecting 10 percentages higher, 36% from three, which is, you know, probably not up to IU standards. But uh, I think across the board, they got enough done. I mean, it's not necessarily an eye-popping box score for an 85 point or 85, 85 points and a 25 point victory, but right. it was more the cohesion, the, uh, the whole uh, that got it all done, I think, which is kind of really the most impressive thing to me. Yeah, and especially coming off those first three wins, you know, we weren't really sure what to make, you know, winning at Rutgers in Nebraska. Road wins are good, but, you know, there wasn't anything that knocked your socks off about uh, those games for the most part. And then the game against Wisconsin the other night was just sort of a struggle where you, you saw that Wisconsin was deficient. It was just a matter of could Indiana take enough advantage to win that game, and it did just enough to win that game. But for the first time, they've actually kind of made a statement uh, with this win today. Yep. All right, folks, uh, that'll do it for us here at Assembly Hall. Um, to Minneapolis we go. To Minneapolis you go. Yeah, well, fair enough. It's snowy out here in Bloomington. I'm sure it'll be snowy up there. Uh, in the meantime, we will have you covered this week. Um, yeah, anything else? We'll have some stuff this week. We'll have. We'll oh, fill you in with some, you some, some details <laughs> later. All right, guys. Take care. Got to get Bill's glasses back.